Land Rover Discovery 3 um, other people like in the American market uh, they call it LR3 uh, for the Discovery 4 they call it um, LR4 just simply LR4 to mean Land Rover uh, 4 now um, these cars have uh, reliability question marks from a wider range of people um, majorly uh, the second second hand market uh, owners of these cars so first of all uh, these are expensive vehicles this is the first point that people do forget uh, these cars are uh, rated at about um, uh, over um, 50,000 pounds 50,000 dollars when they were new over that a uh, well specced one HSE would get to 80,000 uh, which would be around um, a starting price of um, uh, with taxes and everything it could be something way over 10 million Kenya shillings uh, then thanks to the power of depreciation uh, these cars came into the market second hand as from uh, 2010 onwards uh, mind you the very first models that came uh, in 2005 up to 2010 you could have um, local assembly units from CMC Kenya yeah so these cars um, second hand began coming in as from uh, around 2008 and uh, 2010 onwards uh, so these cars were bought while uh, they have well they had done about um, or quite a good a good a good uh, chunk of miles uh, from where they came from be it um, ex japan or be it uh, ex uk uh, market yeah so these cars uh, they came in with um, some miles on the clocks meaning they had already undergone some wear and tear uh, while being driven from their original country of um, ownership now um, these cars as well as the Range Rover Sport Range Rover Vogue um, just generally Land Rover uh, that is not a Defender uh, that is the, the old Defender one up to the Puma um, have had an issue in Africa and in Kenya specifically about the um, resale values uh, as well as the cost of maintenance so on the list we can um, clear out the issue of uh, fuel and um, economy uh, because yeah when you buy these cars do not expect to uh, consume the same um, amount of fuel as you do in the small smaller cars or smaller sized SUVs um, for instance uh, these cars came with a variety of engines so uh, the smallest engine being a 2.7 litre uh, turbo diesel that is the uh, TDV6 uh, we also had the uh, 2.7 litre SDV6 that is a supercharged one and then we had a 3 litre uh, V6 and then we had uh, we still have a 3.6 V6 uh, turbo diesel uh, all the way to um, 4.2 4.4 V8 diesel and then those the biggest of them all the 5 litre supercharged V8 uh, at least for the Range Rover Sport but for this one the biggest they they came in with were um, uh, the 4.4 uh, V8 petrol. On the petrol version, we also still had the 4.2 V6, but these were majorly sold in the US. And of course, Africa, um, many people were not fans of the 4.4 V8, so only a few units came in. Yeah, so these cars, um, just like any other car, if you take care of it, if you take very good care of them, they will also take uh, very good care of you an example would be this very car that i'm in uh, this is a 2005 model one of the early ones hse and um, 
the only things that have gone wrong on the engine are the um, very few consumable items. I would say things like um, timing belt, um, water bump, uh, thermostat issues, uh, some coolant hoses, as well as um, uh, drop covers and um, um, the injector nozzles. However, um, the turbos were also a common fault on this on these cars. So I just want to pick out things that uh, go wrong or things that will go wrong with the Discovery 3 if they, 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 they've not happened yet. Uh, especially for the ones in the local market. So um, I don't know which priority to give to what item or which particular order. I'll just mention them. Um, in no particular order so on the engine side as I said not many things have gone wrong because this car has been well taken care of in terms of um, timely servicing uh, oil changes even um, before due time or due date uh, filters and all that but then uh, these cars have been known to go through their troubles the troubles on these cars fail uh, quite often oftenly uh, for this one this one is on its third turbo uh, when it came uh, to the country with the original turbo uh, that one um, ceased uh, I think a year or two after um, daily use daily running long distance travel but then um, the second one was replaced uh, was, was, was put in and that one lasted for about three years um, and then it also died uh, the actuator died first and then the seals in the turbo died uh, the car began smoking so on that I would now uh, mention uh, symptoms of a failing turbo on Land Rovers and basically most of uh, turbos on, 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 on another car so first of all you would find uh, the car will not be as powerful as it normally is uh, the car loses power there's a lot of lag uh, number two there will be smoke a lot of smoke um, uh, at times you will find uh, uh, whitish smoke uh, and then a lot of black smoke so this happens due to the turbo seals going out and then oil sipping through uh, the seals and getting into uh, the exhaust way and then the car just literally bro uh, the car just literally pushes back oil through the, um, uh, the exhaust pipes yeah so the oil would come in from the feed tubes into the turbo and then seek, uh, uh, seep past through the seals, get into the exhaust way, get on the turbine and be pushed uh, through the exhaust. So you will see smoke um, at the back. Uh, as well as when the turbo is not fully functioning, so um, the car would lack power and would smoke a lot. Uh, you would find very black smoke um on the on the tailgate as well as visible um uh, in your mirrors as you move uh, i don't know what number was that so the other thing would be um the car will throw a fault at you uh, there will be um uh, engine management uh, fault for land rover specifically that would be engine system fault so when you get to um a uh, steep slope when you start going uphill you would find uh, you, you get warnings um, engine fault system then on the diagnosis you would find error codes for um, turbocharger stroke supercharger under boost or turbocharger stroke supercharger actuator uh, malfunction so that will definitely lead you to um, the turbo issue um, other than that, um, this car's being more than 10 years old, uh, the injector, diesel injectors um, go out. Uh, they may die one by one. So um, 
one of the very easy ways to also um, know of your injectors dying is the car will also start being weak sometimes it will have rough idles and then definitely uh, it will have um, misfires so the car will start misfiring and then you can uh, plug in a, a, a tool just to be sure uh, which which um, which cylinder is affected and then definitely that will tell you uh, which injector nozzle which injector nozzle is on that cylinder then you can replace that also um, if you have not been using coolant and uh, instead have used water at some point uh, these cars do not really like that so you would find some of the coolant flanges will go out they will start uh, rotting away um, and coolant flanges here i'm speaking about um, tiny joints between the coolant pipes uh, some of them have really very funny uh, shapes or angles um, others are in the shapes of elbows others are just um, little curves so you will start seeing them cracking um, and then you'll start having coolant issues you'll start having <coughs> overheating issues um, then that would lead you into <coughs> that will lead you into getting um, a new thermostat new coolant flanges um, and just uh, overhauling the whole cooling system uh, these cars are also known for just snapping the crankshaft if you drive them like a maniac um, they are quite powerful cars in terms of torque they are quite torquey uh, for howling definitely uh, but some of the people who do not understand how these cars should be operated would love to floor them every now and then uh, so this car without proper um, oil supply without proper oil changes um, the crankshaft just goes snap in two halves so um, This is also related to an issue some of some people have also uh, experienced with this car in, uh, just in relation to the crankshaft um, problem. Uh, the oil pump on these cars always, uh, not really always, but sometimes do fail. And when they fail, you will also um, face the crankshaft uh, problems. So when this happens, uh, you will be on the motor, you will be on the highway at cruising speeds and then the engine will just stall and um, uh, no crank no no nothing um, on the diagnosis tool you may find um, um, camshaft sensor engine speed sensor correlation faults sometimes not then that would need an engine teardown that will need um, uh, engine rebuild uh, which is one of the options uh, then the other option would be just installing a new engine uh, for markets a new engine is is um, anywhere between um, uh, 500 up to a million uh, Kenya shilling that is um, I would say that would be uh, anywhere from five thousand dollars to uh, ten thousand dollars for, 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 for another engine for those people who understand things better in terms of um, um, the dollar versus other currencies yeah so just to mention a few things now generally most of the things that go wrong on these cars are not the engine uh, best things they are not um, engine internals mostly these cars have uh, body issues uh, in terms of um, suspension um, and uh, definitely transmission so allow me to tackle transmission first so what happens in this cars is that you need to be very cautious with your uh, sorry you need to be very cautious with your transmission service um, I don't know whether I can remember the correct figure that Land Rover recommends but anywhere between uh, 30,000 kilometers and 50,000 kilometers you need to do a transmission flash a transmission um, uh, oil change and then you also need to do um, a transmission filter 
uh, on this card. So a transmission service on this car's gearbox service that will take um, gearbox oil, that will take um, a gearbox filter, and then the gearbox uh, oil pan itself is replaced on this car. This car came with a um, plastic gearbox oil pan, so you have to replace that as well. Yeah, so one of the things that, or just the things that make uh, transmissions be hectic on these cars, remember these cars are fitted with a ZF um, 6 HP uh, gearbox, that is um, 6 speed ZF transmission on these cars, which were also used in um, some BMWs and um, Mercedes uh, across the ranges. So, uh, The intervals with which you do your gearbox service do matter in these cars. You leave them for too long, you pay the price. Uh, you don't do it properly, you pay the price. Don't do it properly in terms of um, if you don't use the correct fluid uh, recommended by Land Rover, uh, they come in the form of um, probably Fabi, um, Ravenel. Uh, original Land Rover oil, but mostly recommended Land Rover oil, as well as um, you not having the correct volumes um, in the car. So this car will take anywhere from seven to nine liters uh, when the gearbox is completely empty, flashed. And then what you do is you have to uh, open the drain plugs, uh, drain the gearbox oil, and then replace the filter and the um, oil pan itself. And then um, after that, you have to uh, close the drain plug, open the fill plug. You have to fill in uh, the engine, uh, sorry, the gearbox oil to where it will start dropping uh, from the fill plug. Then after that, you just have to close the fill plug. Um, and then you have to run the car to a certain temperature uh, around uh, 45 degrees and this can be done with a proper uh, scanning tool that can scan the transmission uh, fluid temperature yeah so you have to fill it until it starts dropping out from the fill plug and then um, run the engine while the car is um, stationary until the gearbox comes to temperature recommended temperature for refilling about 45 degrees and then you can get in uh, under the car sorry and then fill up some more after um, uh, the, it's up to temperature fill up some more and then um, top up to uh, the required level until it drops out again when the engine is running yeah then you um, close the fill plug then you get into the car uh, uh, you have to now sort of do a manual calibration just move from uh, one gear to the other that is from parking to neutral uh, parking reverse neutral and wait for about just 20 seconds in every gear position as um, uh, the fluid gets into uh, those gears clutches uh, all that yeah so I'll do a proper video for gearbox service for these cars but basically that is it uh, so when that goes wrong um, normally it's not very easy or simple to rebuild these gearboxes especially uh, here in Kenya or in Africa so what happens the simplest option people do is just um, uh, swap the gearbox with another one um, a used one or a reconditioned one a reconditioning one is not really cheap as well uh, remember this is Land Rover uh, they are not known for for being cheap it's, um, even their parts as well so um, a replacement gearbox is also anywhere between 200 to 300 350 thousand Kenya shillings depending with uh, where you source it from and who is selling to you and the condition um, let's say how many miles it had done yeah so you just opt to put in another gearbox uh, depending on the condition of the transfer box you can um, opt to 
can go with the original transfer box or put in another gearbox and another transfer box yeah so basically roughly that is what uh, happens with the gearbox uh, we can move to suspension this is the biggest pain for many people in these cars so what happens is um, these cars are a bit sensitive with the gear oh, sorry with the transmission uh, they were fitted with um, for HSE it, uh, they were fitted with air suspension as standard but for the entry level GS GS used to come with conventional suspension that is coil spring and um, shock absorber uh, but I think as from SE XS up to HSE uh, standard air suspension so one of the things that go bad the first things to go bad are bushes so suspension bushes for these cars uh, these cars chew through bushes very very fast remember this is a very big truck and very heavy these cars are I think uh, just over 2.5 tons so with all that weight and then the conditions of the roads especially in, in Africa these cars would go through the bushes very fast yeah so suspension bushes arm bushes um, lower arms upper arms um, uh, stabilizer bushes yeah generally bushes on these cars uh, do perish um, a lot earlier than any other cars um, in this class Yo, away from the bushes we have the suspension links um, so just the two roads that connect the um, uh, upper arms to to the shock uh, for, for 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 other cars but for these ones uh, the, the, the links connect the, um, the upper arms to the anti-roll bar yeah so those two links one on the left one on the right they do go out um, pretty early um, the other thing is the um, pole joints as well as the <coughs> truck ends and the, uh, the tie rod ends so when you're doing a suspension job when you're tackling the bushes it's it's just um, uh, convenient to do everything down there do the bushes uh, do the bushes do the links and um, do the joints the ball joints and the rack ends and, and the tie rod ends together and then just get done uh, from under there uh, this applies um, uh, at the back as well um, then the other thing on the suspension is the um, airbags themselves uh, the air struts so with time we buy these cars in Africa in Kenya as second hand uh, mostly so they would have served as I said earlier in the video they would have served quite a number of miles from where they came from so the air struts come uh, uh, pretty used up so they, they would take uh, several months to check few weeks and then you'll start noticing you'll start noticing the car uh, going low on one end uh, in the morning or going low uh, both ends left right at the front or at the back so with that several issues with the air suspension issue number one uh, we would have the air struts themselves the airbags themselves they might start leaking um, and that would need just replacing the airbag uh, it's also recommended to replace both when the left one goes you do both left right uh, the next thing that would also happen would be um, sorry road constructions here I just want to change lens yeah thank you yeah so we do have uh, the valve blocks that control air supply on both ends at the back uh, as well as of, um, at the front um, the air valve blocks air suspension valve box uh, at the front it's located on the right side 
uh, just behind the um, stone guard. Yeah, so a little valve block that has um, four valves in it, uh, two going to either side regulating the air, and then two, one coming from the pump at the back, and that is the air compressor into the valve, and then a return one. So what happens is we have little o-rings in, inside these valves that go bad and then they start leaking air um, out uh, when the car is parked. Remember when the car is running, um, uh, the ride level control module will always try to balance the car uh, while on the move. So you will never notice while on the move unless the car throws your suspension fault, then you can know what's happening. If it doesn't do that, then probably um, you will never know uh, until when uh, that happens so the right uh, level control module um, working in conjunction with the height sensors um, at each corner will try to recalibrate every time there's a leakage and just try to balance the car uh, every time one side would want to drop so that block goes bad if that block goes bad it's about um, uh, 20,000 Kenya shillings uh, to replace that one and then uh, it's labor it's, it's cheap it's a DIY it's a DIY thing you just have to undo um, a few 10 millimeter uh, bolts that get to it and then you replace the, um, the valve block and then put it back yeah, uh, same thing applies to the back when the back one, when the one at, at the back fails. Um, the other thing would be uh, alignment issues on these cars. So these cars will throw you a suspension fault when the alignment is out, when the car is out of alignment. For instance, if you are out of alignment, if uh, you have camber issues um, as well as caster issues, uh, anytime you do. Uh, change the suspension parts, uh, be it the shocks, be it the bushes, you just have to redo the alignment again. So if you don't, uh, you will have alignment issues, you will have suspension faults. So this car can give you a suspension fault, uh, even though the suspension has no problem, it's just a matter of, um, it's just a matter of uh, alignment. Yeah, so uh, those are the obvious things I can think of in terms of uh, suspension. Uh, the other things I would want to mention are the electrical faults. Uh, so this car has a lot of modules, a lot of computer modules that run different systems uh, on these cars. So uh, what happens is uh, these computers do wake up at different times. So one wakes up and then doesn't get really communication with the other one and the car will throw you um, a fault. Uh, sometimes you will hear some other technicians will tell you to switch off the car, switch it uh, back on and then find out whether the fault has cleared itself. So uh, many, many a times uh, this happens because 